What's up everyone, it's Ben Alonzo from ultratechlife.com at Hamcation 2024. I've come to this thing so many years in a row and it's interesting to see the changes in technology over the last 10, 20 years. Now the weather's perfect today, about 80 degrees, partly cloudy, and there's no rain and that's excellent because we don't want it to rain out here. There's so much electronic tech goodies outside and indoors and I'm carrying 60, 70 pounds of expensive camera equipment so I don't want to get that wet either. So Hamcation is an interesting event for me. It reminds me of my childhood. Remember the first radio you got, the first contact you made, and to simply go back in time, kind of like a history museum. Sure, there's antiques, there's the newer stuff, but this analog stuff fascinates me, especially the old days of scanning. Do you see the scanner radio here? The analog scanners in the 90s, you could go to Radio Shack and have so much information at your fingertips. You could hear your neighbor's baby monitor, cordless phone, every single police fire call aviation skywarn storm spotters you had so much information at your fingertips so as i walk around and i see history it just reminds me of my childhood it reminds me of the radios in action that i've seen in world war ii movies the boat anchors heavy radios like the drake stuff like the collins stuff like the heath kit stuff and again this is a lot of history pieces that you're looking at here. People will tell you stories about this. They'll talk to you about World War II. They'll talk to you about auxiliary radio service. What's also cool is some of these radios that are antiques, boat anchors are in relatively good condition. I thought that was pretty cool that people had the original box, the manual with it. A lot of this stuff was also originally sold as a kit. So not so much these days, but back in the day, you could put together your own kit, which was kind of cool because you took part in making the very radio you're going to use to make your contacts and that. And it was slightly easier in some ways to work on because you had a bigger radio. So simply looking at the changes over time, there's an interface time when we started going to LCD and LED displays. That was pretty cool. I remember when that happened, I could afford none of this stuff as a kid. My first used HF radio which required a lot of work just to get it working. It was really beat up with a Heath kit. But it's so cool to see these pieces of history indoors and outdoors at Hamcation. Lots of people from all over the world come to this thing. It's an indoor-outdoor three-day event. You re really need a lot of time to go through this. Older stuff, newer stuff, like the TYT radio stuff, Baofeng cheap stuff, a mixture of everything. People selling mixers, CCTV equipment, laptop equipment. So they're... There's a little bit of everything at this. And again, I was amazed at some of the radios I saw, the condition they were in. They're very clean from what I've seen at some other smaller ham fests. So that's really cool to see that stuff. And again, if you go indoors, the main vendors come to this, like ICOM, like Kenwood, like Yesu. And of course, you'll have ham radio stores like Ham Radio Outlet. There's less and less stores these days. So... That's what makes these hamcations like this big event, the second largest ham fest in the U.S., kind of cool to come out to with so many reduced numbers of ham radio stores out there. So there's a lot of things you can get your hands on at this. Everything you can think of, the FCC calls all these devices and stuff parts to experiment. That's what the purpose of ham radio is. Experimentation, learning more, and that's exactly what you can do. Lots of opportunities here. Like, how cool is that? Talking to the space station using your license to do lots of cool stuff with ham radio equipment like building this stuff like building antennas which is really cool because not only do we have the analog quote old school stuff we have the digital modes we have network interface now so there's so many different modes so many opportunities in ham radio i started as a storm spotter and chaser a long time ago got a big interest in severe weather got an interest in Skywarn and then went to undergraduate school for meteorology for my first undergraduate degree again all starting with ham radio I had a big interest like Aries and Races I did that for almost a decade and a half and it was always fun to be a part of something there was always opportunities in ham radio and again just to see the changes that have happened was amazing like these touchscreen displays where you can control the radio through the display through the computer system interface bluetooth connectivity all of that cool stuff and again i started storm spotting storm chasing 23 years ago or something this company pete brothers sent me one of these and sponsored me well over 20 years ago 
So like I said, Amcation brings back memories for me. And I went deeper and deeper into the commercial side of radio. Still love ham radio. Still love talking on VHF and UHF systems, especially the newer control heads. Everything's mobile these days, which is another huge thing. My interest a long time ago, besides the storm spotting and chasing, was prepping. A lot of you are interested in that, preparing for tornadoes, disasters, wireless connectivity, power outages. So the rack mount portable stuff is really cool. Grab and go kits. And again, all the parts you need, you're going to be dealing with amplifiers, connectivity parts, BNC to PL259, whatever. All that stuff is here. So again, a little bit of everything at Hamcation. And I always love coming to these things because this is the only place at the time when I was a kid that I could get the Hershey's Kisses antennas. I would take my first handheld radio with me everywhere on trips and I had to have that little mag mount antenna with me and so these were great to get. Everything's mobile these days which reminds me my first storm spotter new mobile radio was an ICOM so I want to drop by the ICOM booth and ask about ham radio trends. It's It's been interesting to see what's happened over the years from when you were talking about you first getting into it and doing the storm chasing. There has been a lot of introduction of multiple digital voice protocols out there, but when it really comes down to an emergency, you go to your least common denominator for communications. Majority of the people have, have analog radios. So it doesn't matter what protocol you're using, if you're talking to a group of hams and the majority of them have analog, you will be adjusting to an analog communication. Uh, you've got FM repeaters all over the world, not only just the United States. So while we are seeing this influx of digital communications, more people are staying, are playing around with all the different digital mode. ICOM in, it was one of the first ones to introduce a touchscreen type user interface. Um, one of the things that we've done is that user interface is pretty much used across all of our base stations. So it's easy, whether we're VHF, UHF, to touch the button to select the mode or touch the button to select the frequency. That common screen is on many of our different products. So when you sit down in front of one of our radios, you can migrate to a different radio and already have a good idea how it operates. That's not seen in all companies. So what, what we've done is we've developed a, a system to operate all the functionality on something that makes it very simple for the user to do without having to pick up the manual. It is, it is interesting that you'd say that. There, yes, there are a lot of mounting solutions out there because you've got a lot of devices now that are in vehicles, whether it's a cell phone or a tablet type device. A lot of our control heads are small enough. We've got a couple of radios that utilize magnets to hold the radio to the metal. But the one thing with today's cars, there's more safety devices in them. You have to really plot out how you're going to install the radio because you don't want the head of the radio becoming a projectile when your airbags go off. Some of today's vehicles have 19 airbags. They're no longer just the one in the steering wheel. This kind of reminded me of a few points Ray was making there. As a storm chaser, storm spotter, certainly ham radio operators, we love to mount so much in our vehicles. But these days, the vehicles have so many safety systems that require some kind of planning to do this safely. So just think twice about that. So, did you get out to Hamcation? Did you see something interesting? Like, did you go on a treasure hunt? Did you find something? Do you think these prices are too high, too low? Do you see something interesting in the video? Maybe you didn't make it out to Hamcation. Again, it's always cool to come out to this with the less and less amount of amateur radio stores that are out there where you can actually get your hands on something. It was so cool to see pieces of history indoors and outdoors at this three-day event. It was cool to have people come up to me and tell me 
their stories about how they got these radios, what they did with them, maybe was passed down from their parents or a friend. And again, people from different walks of life all over the world, the second largest ham fest. It's all about experimenting, like the FCC says. There's so many opportunities to get involved in this. And again, I partially credit ham radio to some extent for me becoming a scientist and a professor and a meteorologist. And even since I did storm chasing, I was the first on the scene after tornadoes, so that caused me to go to emergency medical science school and become an EMT, all because of experimenting. So it's always cool to get out there to Hamcation. It's a big event. There's lots of stuff for people that are just introducing themselves into ham radio or the more advanced people. So like, share, subscribe, comment. Did you make it out here? If you didn't, did you see something interesting in the video? Check out ultratechlife.com. Like, share, subscribe. And again, thank you very much for watching the video.